gold or silver? Wow, that's that's a tough question. Am I correct in that the premiums for for junk silver, constitutional silver, are is starting to come down now? Yeah. What is it about leading SD bullion that gives you the most satisfaction? Hey everyone, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. Today we have Tyler Wall with me. He's the CEO of SD Bullion, one of the largest online bullion dealers in the business. And I know you're going to really enjoy this discussion on silver and gold. So let's get to it. Hi, Tyler. Welcome to Yankee Stacking. Hi, Yankee. Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for taking time out of what is no doubt a very busy schedule for you. I appreciate it. As you know, our YouTube community loves the physical silver and gold, like these Type 2 Eagles that I got from SD Bullion recently. Very nice. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. I am a stacking channel, Tyler, and I got to ask you, are you a stacker? Well, absolutely. I think that's one of the things that makes us kind of unique is, uh, you know, from when we when we started the business, you know, a lot of people, when they start a business, they just throw in you know, some dollar bills and they, mm -hmm. they may, if they have a partner, everybody throws in the equal amount of dollar bills and they say, okay, we'll start with this investment capital. Me and the other co-founder, we each threw in a monster box each of Silver Eagles. Mm -hmm. And that was our initial inventory to start the business. So I think our you know accountants obviously converted that to dollars in the balance <laughs> sheet. But for us, it was, hey, let's throw, you throw in 500 ounces, I'll throw in 500 ounces and let's see how it goes. Because initially we just had a, you know, a news website with a lot of traffic, mm -hmm. but we weren't really sure if we we're going to start a bullion business. Um, we, we gauged our initial interest by just putting up, you know, an, an article or a post on our website. And we said, Hey, is everybody, anybody interested in going in with a group buy with us? Cause wow. we were both interested in buying uh, some silver. We figured if we rounded up <laughs> enough support, maybe we'd get a lower price. And then we could uh, negotiate that lower and then, then distribute it out to you know, some smaller stackers so everybody could participate in getting it at a lower premium. So yeah, to answer your question, we were absolutely stackers from the very beginning, <laughs> which is different than uh, some of the people in the industry that uh, you know, still to this day, they might run a bullion business, mm -hmm. they might be involved in, in mining, they might be involved in minting, but there is very few people that actually believe in stacking themselves. And I think that's a huge differentiating point between us and everybody else that's kind of in this market for that reason. I love that organic uh, growth from just starting with two monster boxes. That is fantastic. Right. Do, what, what do you like to buy now for yourself, Tyler? Well, I've always been a big believer in Eagles, but also 90% at the right time. So for me, when the market's kind of slow, and you see 90% prices that are like less than a dollar, sometimes it's under spot. I mean, that is my by far my favorite product to actually acquire. And, and, and it, because, you know, it, it never fails. Like when we see a period of time like COVID last year, mm -hmm. or we see a period of time like the beginning of this year where market demand just goes, you know, off the charts, just skyrockets, Crazy. right? Nine, 90% is the first product that shows you signs of tightness. They do not mint anymore 90%, That's right? True. I mean, it's, it's no true. longer be minted. And, you know, it, it starts spiking. I mean, it can spike up to six, $7 over spot, I think it was in, in mm. January. I mean, it could, I think it, at one point it might reach even higher than that. Yeah. And, it, and, and like a couple of years prior to that, there was literally people that were melting 90%. Because it was worth more melted than it was selling it as 90%. <laughs> wow. Am I correct in that the premiums for, for junk silver, constitutional silver, are it's starting to come down now? Yeah. Yeah. It start, it's starting to come down, I would say, over the last maybe two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. It's starting to come down. So it's really interesting to watch that market. Um, you know, we have a more of an inside look. And so I've, I've had uh, what, 10 years to actually evaluate this market both on... Uh, the wholesale, yeah. and that's a product that we have tremendous buying power, even direct from say like coin shops. You know, mm -hmm. right now we're in a period of uh, range bound uh, precious metal pricing, where silver and gold really haven't done anything over the last couple of weeks, and demand's gone down just a little bit. Um, I think there's some some uh, I don't know. I think some everybody's kind of tired of seeing 25, 26 silver. You also explained how SD Bullion was founded. It was back, I think, right. in 2012, right? Right. Yeah, and, beginning of 2012, yeah. And now you're one of the top tier online bullion dealers. I think you were the number one 
fastest growing precious metals dealer in the U.S. Right. Is that right. Yep. We were one of the fastest one buying 500. And I think we're the third, we're the third largest precious metal retailing country now. Um, wow. You know, we, so we've kind of grew a little bit slower than some at the very first or couple first couple of years because we we never took on any debt. So we started with a thousand ounces, and my gosh, it's amazing to see what that's grown into. <laughs> but uh, we just kept on turning and turning and turning the inventory, and every every time we've got a profit, we reinvested it back into more inventory. Um, you know, it's just it's an interesting story. I mean, we were we were both pharmacists, and uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to be out of that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> as a pharmacy manager that I spent so long working, working oh. about well, over a decade in the pharmacy before I, you know, left and, uh, you know, grew this, but we were growing this business the entire time. What is it about leading SD bullion that gives you the most satisfaction? For, for me, you know, it was always a focus of, of us to educate and educate and educate the, the people that were visiting the website, mm -hmm. uh, into the value of precious metal and, you know, now there's 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 other things that that interest me, including you know hiring you know and people. We uh, invest in hiring you know interns from the the local college and and educating them on the value of precious metals because they they absolutely do not get exposed to this education in uh, college or high school or any any school these days in terms of educating on sound right. money and you know where money comes from and and all these things. And we, as part of their initial training, we send them down the educational pathway of like them learning what, what how money is created and uh, what the purpose is of gold and silver. So that's that's definitely rewarding. And and I also love technology and technology development. So I get to see some of that stuff where we're now um, you know building on our own ERP systems and and customizations that uh, increase the efficiency and decrease the price that we can offer the customers on their products. And so that that's another part that I really enjoy. Tyler, as a man of deep personal faith in uh, Jesus Christ myself, in my opinion, you have one of the most meaningful business cards I think I've ever read. What does this uh, mission statement uh, mean <laughs> to you and how have you attempted to live it out in your life? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I think back, I actually have a business card on my end too, but you know, <laughs> mission is to glorify God through how we manage SD Bullion and serve our customers. I mean. From day one, we never took on debt, and it was more mm -hmm. a, more of a um, you know following Old Testament law and and understanding like why that was put in place. And uh, there's been times that you know we kind of you know hey, should we take on some more debt or should we acquire this new facility? I'll share a short story with with your listeners, but uh, we we were we were always set no debt, no debt, no debt, and uh, we needed to purchase a new uh, fulfillment facility, right? You went to this look at this beautiful property, 37 acres, huge, like, tw it's uh, about 40,000 square foot facility, and it was going to require us to, to take on debt as a company. And so I went and prayed about it, and it was it was in the parking lot. I felt like I felt like immediately like the Holy Spirit come on me and say. It was a song on the radio called Dana Goki, Haven't Seen It Yet. It's the first time I've heard it on the radio. This is like three or four years ago. We we're looking at this property. And I'm like, it, it was it was coming up this building. It was just speaking to me. I was like, okay, this must be okay to take on debt. So I went back to the office, wrote up an offer. The offer wasn't accepted. Several months later, a church became available for us to purchase. And it was like a 20,000 square foot church, open floor plan. It's like, okay, this is gonna work. We, we can afford this cash. Put in an offer, it was accepted bought it, closed on it. A day later, I get a call from a pastor to buy the church I just bought. bought. And he, I said, well, okay, you can have this church, but I got to make enough money. And luckily we had made enough more money alongside. And we ended up purchasing the same building that I initially looked at, which is the 37 <laughs> acres, a 40,000 square foot facility. And we're set to move in there in a, in a month or two. So one of the very, uh, one of the many stories that I could say like, Hey, he's been with us the entire way. And, uh, you know, you can see that hopefully through the way we're doing things and, and people putting their trust in us to send, you know, sometimes millions of dollars and uh, rely on us to get them product um, so they can protect their, their hard earned assets. Oh, what a great story, man. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, I also know that you privately donate I think 10% of your profits to charity, right? Right. Yeah, to Christian Christian organizations, yep, throughout the area. And, you know, we, we typically are not uh, ones that are that probably uh, 
focus on the name, the brand names. Like we're typically looking at some of the community and some of these smaller organizations that may not have huge marketing departments. So we take that pretty seriously too. Uh, and uh, especially some like these local local Christian organizations mm -hmm. in, uh, next to our, our greater Toledo uh, area where we're based out of. Also, you say back down on the bottom here, uh, or near the bottom, uh, if I can read that, we strive to provide the highest quality products at the lowest prices so that our customers right. may have access to protect their hard earned assets. So, and, and yeah. you have a bold statement in the front too, lowest price, yeah. period. <laughs> it's, <laughs> that's yeah. bold, man. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's definitely interesting because, you know, when, when we first started, there's, you know, we were stackers from the very beginning. Right. So, um, neither me or the co-founder went around say, telling everybody with the with a flag, "Hey guys, we're, we're stackers, guys. Like we're, you should, <laughs> we buy gold and silver, you know." Um, but you know, I, I remember a story where it, essentially my grandpa didn't even know I, I we had started this precious metal business, and he listened to one of those radio advertisements on on, uh, on the radio one day, and he'd been buying off this this entity for a number of months before I, I got a hold of him about what he was doing. And, and I remember thinking like, you know, they, they were ba basically ch selling at a hundred percent markup, 200% oh, markup. There's no way that he could take the products that they were bought. He was buying off, off this uh, radio or television ad and then turn around and, and, and sell it. So we've always been focused in on selling, you know, bullion products that uh you know at the lowest prices because we understand there's there's competition mm -hmm. and uh you know a silver eagle you can buy it from multiple different places and so uh for us it's it's uh about being able to offer that service to to our customers to be able to get them you know sell at the lowest sell at, at the lowest price price possible and ensure that that we can ship it you know quickly to their house and, and securely and safely to their house because you know it, there's cheaper ways to ship uh, but we want to make sure it gets there this pandemic has uh, yeah. really affected companies in a variety of ways. How did it affect your company, Tyler? Right. So yeah, the the pandemic was interesting. We were really fortunate. Um, you know, when everybody started uh, panicking, you know, our business went was it went up tremendously. As you might, you know, you might have been buying from us, but there's a lot of people buying from us, and everybody else was letting people go because they saw this pandemic coming, and they're like, "Well, geez, our, our demand's gone down." We were able to, to onboard a lot of new employees when everybody else was purchasing from us. So we got pretty lucky there. So Tyler, I have a stacking question for you. And I get this question a lot, but what do you think stackers should be buying right now, post pandemic, gold or silver? Wow, that's that's a tough question. Um, you know, I would, I would probably said gold, you know, uh, two weeks ago. You know, two weeks ago, you had silver eagles trading at ten dollars, eleven dollars, you know, up to fifteen dollars over spot. Mm -hmm. And um, gold's is has not seen nearly the shortage and the the pinch hmm. that silver has. So for me, I, I would say two weeks ago, I definitely would be for gold. Now it's a little bit tougher because some of the silver premiums have come down. I mean, we have a, a special right now. I believe this week was you know. 100 ounce bars for 249 over spot. Um, that's that's one of the best prices you've seen probably in over a, a year and a half, yep. you know? And um, so I'm thinking that uh, right now I'd be, I'd be tempted to buy some uh, larger silver, but smaller, probably smaller stackers, I would still be on gold depending on the purchase size. Interesting. You, your company, I should say, ships internationally. Um, right. You also have free shipping of one hundred and ninety nine dollars or over for domestic orders in the U.S. Right. Um, actually, Tyler, I remember when it was ninety nine dollars. Are we seeing? Yeah. Are we seeing inflation here? Well, definitely inflation. I mean, I think one of the the highest inflationary metrics has been our shipping costs. Like it's just gone sky high. I mean, last year, you know, whether it be FedEx or UPS, I mean they jacked up our prices. It had to be 25% by the time you actually looked at the services and things that they were changing. So, um, and, and, and they weren't even getting signatures, you know, like you pay for a signature and they just drop it at the door. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> what am I paying am for? I paying right? <laughs> yeah. I paid you like $5 for a signature and you're just dropping it at the door. So, <laughs> you know, I, I think that that's, uh, you know, that's obviously inflation metric. And then the other thing you got to think about and a lot of people, 
yeah, they don't they don't you know think about this aspect is that when you're buying um, say like a Silver Eagle, and if it's if it's selling at forty or forty five dollars, like you only have to buy two coins before you get past the ninety nine dollar free free uh, free shipping. Mm-hmm. If it was ninety nine dollars, and usually, I mean our margins are tiny. So yep. it's always about how much money do we want to lose if we sell something that's just over ninety nine dollars, uh, as it relates to you know that where that that threshold is on free shipping. Right. What is your take on the uh, bullion dealer consolidation that we've been seeing uh, yeah. rather recently? You know, Provident to JM Bullion to A Mark. Is that good for the stacking consumer? I don't think any sort of consolidation in the market right now is incredibly good for the consumer. I think we're going to see some more more consolidation, I believe, in the market over the next year or two because you know there's been companies, including ourselves, who we've been able to obviously volume increases profits when when you're when you're looking at. So we've been able to make a, a decent amount of money over the last year or two with with more interest into our market, like you'd hope and you'd expect uh, inside of our space and. Some of some of the other entities made a lot. I mean, mints and wholesales, and you know, there's lots of people that made a decent amount of money, and they're probably looking at uh, acquiring other businesses. And there's a lot of businesses in this space that are run by um, maybe older older individuals that are looking to retire. Mm-hmm. So I think some of them will be looking at this as a possible opportunity to exit. And um, yeah, I think you're going to continue to see it. I don't think it's great for the retail customer, but um, inevitably, I think that there could be a period of time where, you know, it could be good for the customer, just not long term. Okay. Yep. <laughs> the other question I get asked about is state sales tax policies. All right. So, you know, the local coin shops themselves, they don't have to actually worry about it because they're within one jurisdiction or one city and they just have to be compliant with one city. So like a state like Colorado, where you have to register across, you know, 60 or 70 jurisdictions, you got to renew that annually. Uh, you have to you know, sign off on a personal guarantee. So it, it, that's just Colorado. I mean, you can look at all these different states and like New York, for example, uh, I think the tax threshold there is like if it's over spot by 30 or 40 percent, it becomes taxable. But if it's below that over spot it's it's uh not taxable so if you think about our website and that you know every 15 or 30 seconds it reloads a market price you know in some situations an item could be taxable in one you know 15 second period and then the next time it loads it could be untaxable because it, because the market price and the premium percentages change on every load come on they don't they don't tax the purchase of stocks bonds right. etfs currencies, yeah. other financial instruments. So it makes no sense that they should be taxing monetary metals. Yeah. And the states will come after you. Uh, if those watching have never purchased your silver and gold from Tyler's company, you definitely need to. Just uh, use my link, if you will, sdbillion.com slash Yankee. And I think you'll see why. It's this line here, the lowest price period it's true, guys. All right, Tyler, is there anything else that uh, you want to share with us before we uh, end this? No, I really like your channel. So keep up the great work. And uh, we, we share a vision in educating others about you know, the value of precious metals, which is great. And uh, definitely appreciate your support. Amen, brother. Thanks for joining me.